Welcome back to another video. Welcome guys, back to a new video. What is happening guys and welcome back to another video. This video is a cooking video with Carlo Ramsey on the show. We are basically going to be cooking my, well, well firstly we're going to, we're going to Lidl to buy the food. Cheapest supermarket to buy, uh, to buy our food for prep, obviously when you're buying chicken and mints and all that in bulk and pastas, if you're gonna shop in Tesco and Asda, it almost pretty much works out double, double the cost. If you're from the UK anyway. So we're on our way to Lidl now, we're gonna buy all that, and then later when we get home, I'm gonna cook it all, I'm gonna show you how to cook in bulk. I tend to prep for a couple of days at a time, which means I cook all my chicken off, cook my mints off, pasta, um, veg, all those kind of things, and I do it every few days, and I whack them in containers. When you talk about diet, obviously consistency, I find, is one of the best things that you can really do with your diet. Flexible diet is great, obviously lifestyle, counting your calories and things like that. But especially when you're contest prepping, you kind of need to know what works well with your body, what doesn't, what upsets your stomach, magpie, what doesn't upset your stomach, and what digests well, and uh, kind of what makes you look better, which is exactly everything you need to know from when it comes to contest prep. So consistency in your meals, if you can, meal timings, obviously things change though, you know, life is life. Staying consistent in the foods, I tend to stick to like three certain types of carbohydrates. Well, this contest prep anyway, a lot of the time I've been a bit more flexible than the other times. Like I said, I really want to give everything I've got for this prep. So again, I keep about three different types of carbohydrates. My main carbohydrates are rice, brown pasta, oats, and I use bagels around workouts, to be honest. You know, as I get closer to the show, I might potentially drop the brown pasta because the brown pasta fills me up, but it also makes me bloat. And I, you know, when I get leaner and I'm going towards the show, I don't really want to feel bloated or anything like that. And bagels, bagels is, is different with everyone because it's bread at the end of the day. It's just a finer source of bread and easier to digest compared to normal bread. It's a lot quicker in the digestive system in the body. I mean, people tend to have it before, pre or post workout because it's a lot easier and lighter to, to digest. It's, it's still bread at the end of the day. Sometimes you can, if you can't digest bread very well, then sometimes it's better to just cut it out. But for now, 12 weeks out, I'm all right with bagels. So they are my main carbohydrates. The protein sources right now are chicken and minced beef. Again, as I get closer to the show, I will drop out the minced beef eventually. and probably swap them for like fish, keep the chicken in, or maybe just keep them straight chicken. So, Lidl, I'm gonna show you everything that we are gonna buy now to prep the food, put them into containers to help with consistency on or in staying on your diet. One child costs 10 pounds. <laughs> Pick them up from the trolleys outside. Avocados. I have no avocados in my diet, but Soph does, so we're gonna get some avocados. They're quite squidgy though. Do you like them harder or squidgy? Mm. <laughs> Seriously. A little bit harder than the squidge. They need to laugh. Yeah. The chicken meal, the chicken broccoli in there. Usually with chicken and rice. Garlic and broccoli. I put onion and garlic in the mince as well. I use a tomato passata as well, which I'm showing off. Which is there actually. <laughs> Two jars of that, minimal calories, just with a dash. Just to make it a bit more tomatoey when we are cooking the pasta, so. Brown pasta. Greatest thing about brown pasta is it's slow digesting carb, right? But literally, like 100 grams is probably something like uh, 60, 60 cups. And a whole 100 is a lot as well. Like you put 50 in a serving. Um, it helps keep you full. And again, that's, that's the key to prep, is uh, finding things which keep you full, like volume, but like kind of lower calories. My first meal is overnight oats. So it's Greek yogurt and oats pretty much. Dash of honey, and I put some fruit in there, some good antioxidants. Berries are not too high in sugar and calories, so it gives a bit of flavor as well. You can't do it in here when everyone is here, and they don't know you. We're famous, son. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> no one mess with me. So, as I was saying the protein sources, right? Uh, chicken and mints, that's what I'm using right now. The mints, obviously 5% low fat, I'm trying to keep as, the meat as lean as I can. I'm still giving it flavour and making sure prep isn't completely bland. So it's 750 grams and I split these into about 190 gram portions. So it's got, and then soaps it half that, pretty much. Obviously we can prep together, cook them together. 
Judgment Callahan. <laughs> so I will buy three of these. Yeah. I'll probably freeze one or two. I'll freeze two of them and cut yeah. one. Chicken. Chicken. Obviously, get massive ones. They cook. We go through a lot He's of chicken. Massive, bro. Some days, yeah, that because I'm massive. <laughs> like I said, some days I don't always have mints. We I swap them sometimes. If I'm holding, you know, if I'm a bit heavier, I find chicken is a leaner meat again, so it tends to dry you out a bit more. So if I'm holding a bit of weight or water for whatever reason, I will swap uh, the mints with chicken. I have double chicken in the day. So I'm gonna get about two, two of those or three. 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 Get through the week. And I'll freeze two. Pretty much. You go to Tesco, plus you double. Chicken's chicken, man. Yeah. First meal, overnight oats, says Greek yogurt and uh, oats. 11 grams of protein per 100 grams, right? If it's not this one, and I run out for whatever reason, I usually go, if I'm close to Tesco, I'll go and get the phage, total zero. But, massive price of 350 grams, 89p. Again, it's £2.50 um, in Tesco for like, when the 250 grams up to 350 grams. Massive difference, save a lot of money with that. 800 pints a day on this. That was a lot. Oh, so some, uh, some Italian wine, bro. Italy? No. You actually? No, I'm um, yeah, France. Yeah. Bonjour! Hello, that's my accent. Coke Zero. Life saviour on prep. I don't know why. Tastes know why good, but no That's calories. Good. I know. Zero calories. Oh huh? ah, yeah. Uh huh. Ricardo, wow. I think you've missed something. <laughs> Lol. So the last thing that we need asparagus. So there's two lots of um, greens really. We got broccoli in uh, the chicken meal, and then I put this in the mint. It's actually a game changer when you put it in the mint because they're so flavoursome. Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> yeah, asparagus in the mints. The rice. I don't actually buy my rice from me. I buy because you're constantly on the go all the time. Uh, Uncle Ben's basmati rice. That's the, that's the rice I use. But I always get that from Tesco. A lot of the time they're on offer. They're like a pound a bag, something like that. So I tend to just get my rice like when I go to Tesco and I buy like four, five, six bags and I keep it either in the gym because I'm in there all the time, I keep a couple of bags at home and that goes with my chicken dish. I just literally just whack it in the microwave when I heat my chicken up. It's done. Hello. Hello, it's time, you two. Have fun taking videos. I'm going to go back outside, okay? <laughs> Do more bitches. She does um, like a fitness channel on uh, how to get sick ass quads. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to subscribe. <laughs> Pretty much going to freeze. Like I said, I, I only cook for like a, like two days at a time. I don't really like cooking more than that because that shit's nasty. When it's um, refrigerated for too long, I'm fine. You can cook for like four days at a time or whatever, and you can freeze them and stuff, but um, I prefer it. It's easier for me. It's not a problem for me to do it every two days or three days. So I'm gonna freeze these two. I'm gonna cook one. We are going to eat some chicken now, which I'm just going to cook quickly. I'm going to cook one of those. I'm going to freeze one of these. What was that? Jay, Jay, come here. Jay. Probably going to cook uh, half of this. That's four chicken breasts. Actually, I'm going to use two now because we're going to cook some now to eat because we haven't eaten meal number 500 yet. And then I put the other half in the fridge to cook in two days time. And then the other one, I freeze, basically. basically. This Sophie darling behind the camera is going to make the breakfast, <laughs> which is meal number one, which is Greek yogurt overnight oats with the raspberries. So we're gonna use two of these for the mince down again. Two of them are gonna go in the freezer. Broccoli's going with the chicken meal. Uh, pasta, I'm gonna cook some pasta off as well. And I'm gonna show you how we do the mince. Let's go on with the cooking, right? So like I said, I cooked two chicken breasts now, which we just ate. Right now. We've got the other half here, so I've got four chicken breasts I'm chucking in there. Four and a, and a bit. I took the fillets off the other, um, of the meal, the chicken we just had then. So, four chicken breasts there with the fillets. I boil them in water. The reason why I boil them, because I find when you heat up chicken that is pre-cooked already, if you do them in the oven or if you do them pan-fried, it tends to be a lot drier when it comes to heating them in the microwave. But boiling them, if you cook it slow, 
boiled, it tends to keep the moisture in there. Um, it's not so not so dry, to be honest with you. So this is boiling water right here. I'm literally just whole, no prep or anything out. I literally just chuck in the chicken breasts. So fate them. Obviously, I don't let the water boil too much, right? You want to kind of keep it light bubbles. The slower you cook it, the better it is. Especially with things trying to keep the moisture in there. So I'm just going to put this on there, lid on there. And it's kind of on like a low heat, and I keep that at the back now and just let that boil. I prepped here, I got 250 grams of bound pasta because I'm having one portion tonight. So that leaves me with another four portions, which is basically for the next two days for myself and Soph because we both have 50 grams each. So that should make five portions in here. So I'm going to whack that in the boiling water now. I got broccoli prepped to go in there. I don't count my green veg at the moment. I tend to count my veg the last few weeks out from the show just to know even the fibrous carbs and things that's going in. 12 weeks out or just general lifestyle diets and things like that, I wouldn't bother counting the greens. I just got onion, garlic and those asparagus chopped and they are going in with the mince with the pasta. I'm going to take that pasta here, I'm just going to put this in the water. Ideally you want a bigger saucepan for this. It's gonna, it just means it's going to cook quicker. That's what we got. Broccoli, just going to whack that in. Be careful with the broccoli because it cooks very fast. Also, a tip with the broccoli, right? When it comes to reheating them, and you put them in the microwave, it cooks them in the microwave as well. So you kind of want to slightly undercook the broccoli so it's a tiny bit hard. So when it comes to putting them in the microwave, they're kind of like the perfect consistency. Also, when broccoli's too too cooked or just like cooked, if you move them around a lot, they tend to all break apart and things like that. I say that now, I'll probably come up now. <laughs> so we got the chicken in, we got the pasta in, we got the broccoli in. Right now, I'm gonna do the mint. The mint is a little bit more, um, Complex again, you don't always have to do mint. If you want to do fish, you can even do the same thing. You can either you can either put fish in the oven um, and slow cook them in there whilst all that is going on. But um, I like mint, I'm a big red meat eater, I always eat red meat, so I like to keep red meat in my diet. I tend to swap it with fish towards the end, like the last four to six weeks, just for drying out purposes and things like that. Um, and then, especially for refilling, I get the red meat in then um, before the show. But for now, here in the mint, I got fry lettuce. Literally about 50 sprays, bear in mind it's splitting into about four four different portions. Six, because I have soaps into the other ones. So six different portions. So I put 50 sprays in here and it's literally one calorie per spray. And that's what I use for frying. As soon as that starts heating up a little bit, I literally just chuck in straight away the asparagus, yeah. onions and garlic. It doesn't take long to heat up this because it's not like, it doesn't hold the heat like coconut oil or olive oil or something like that. So it can burn quite fast, so I just chuck them in almost within the first 30 seconds. You can only hear it sizzling. I'll just let that toast basically. Brown off the onions, brown off the asparagus. Asparagus will go soft if you keep frying them like that and eventually will the heat when you're cooking the mince and everything. They go soft as well and it releases all the flavours into the pan so it tastes. I like to also cook oh God, asparagus and uh, mince in general with like a saucepan because you can kind of steam it. Again, steam I find a lot, keeps the moisture and it makes it less dry as opposed to things that's fried. So almost when that's kind of started getting hot and you can hear it sizzling, I just whack the lid on it pretty much. When that starts browning off, kind of just before it starts, like not burning, but you can see it toasting, that's when I'll chuck the mince in then as well. Tiny, tiny bit of salt. If you put too much salt in, again, that tends to dry it up when you're pre-cooking. I've got a photographer in here, it's the paparazzi. Oh, I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You can rub me. So at this point now, so I can see the onions cooking, they're going brown, the asparagus is getting softer, right? With the asparagus as well, the asparagus tends to like absorb a lot of the, the salt. So it can taste quite bland, so I do put a touch of salt in there as well with that. And then, now this is where I work in the mince. Break it up. Just let it heat up through, through the mince. I'm just gonna put the lid on it. Then in a minute, I'm basically gonna, I'm gonna stir it around. And again, add a touch of salt, so it's not too bland. If you're new to cooking and you don't really cook that much, keep an eye on the pasta and the broccoli, like just keep stirring it on things, otherwise it will stick. And even the broccoli, if you haven't got a massive pan, I mean they cook quite fast the broccoli. Saying that, which the broccoli pretty much stands, so we take them out. Okay. 
just whilst I'm cooking the other food, I'll whack this back in the pan. You want to let it all cool down anyway to about room temperature before you kind of whack it in the fridge and put it in containers. So I leave this just on the back stove, it's off though. Right now, so I add my touch of salt in here. Again, so it's not too bland. I prefer to put less in anyway, salt and whatnot. Um, because you can always add more afterwards when it's cooked. I'd rather just heat the food up when it comes to having to eat it. And then put the salt on afterwards rather than putting too much. But you don't want the complete whole meal to be completely bland, do you? Just mixing all the onions and garlic and the asparagus and all that in with the mince. And let the mince all cook evenly. Later on, I'm just going to let it cook now pretty much. I'm just going to keep repeating that um, until it's all completely browned off. And the mince is brown. And then I add like a dash of this passata, tomato passata. Again, everything is counted. All the calories are counted, which I will show you at the end. And it's just uh, this is one I used from before. I tend to use almost half of this. But again, it gives it a tomato taste, so it's not too bland. And again, it's split into like four to six portions. So the calories are literally minimal on there. It'll be like 10, 20 calories from it, 30 calories. Pasta done. So mince is pretty much round off, right? There's juice on the bottom, right? Which is just coming off the meat. It's coming off the asparagus. is all the juices where it's picked up from the onions as well. It's obviously giving it a lot of flavour. And the whole jar is 700. So with a portion like that, I will tend to put about half of it, which is 350, more or less. So all I do scale trick here. There's other scales which don't tend to be able to get a negative on here, but these ones do for some reason. So I literally just put that on there. It says on. So it goes to zero. And then I take that off. And it goes minus so. I'm going to guesstimate here. This is going to be about 350 roughly. And I put it back on. That's what's been taken out. 270 more or less. I might even use a little bit less. So I know when it comes to putting in my macros and working out the meals, 358, same thing, pretty much 360. And that's what I get to put in my macros. So the calories are not really uh, that crazy for the sauce, it's just like just tomato the other the day. It's not like the Lloyd's Gosman ones and they put those preservatives and um, other things in there to make it taste nice. It's literally just straight blended tomato. So all I'm going to do is just mix that in. So then the mince just sucks up all the tomato. And again, it's not dry and bland. It's nice. Very, very nice. <laughs> so obviously, again, all that juice then, what we do is keep it on a low heat, pretty much. And we we'll put the lid back on it. And then the longer you cook that, what happens is all the mince kind of just soaks up all that juice and it's got all the flavour in it so it's just called reducing it and just reducing it um, the water and the juice and everything like that so again the tomato gets thicker, everything gets thicker basically, the mince gets thicker so I'll just leave that there on like a low heat, loads of medium heat the chicken is still cooking in there all I do, it should give it another 10-15 minutes or so and it should more or less be ready, that uh, chicken but all I'll do just to double check that it's ready is give it a good slice in the middle in the thickest one. I'll try and find the thickest chicken. That's obviously going to be the longest one, the one that takes longest to cook. So I find the, the thickest chicken, I just slice it in the middle. If it's cooked, if it's white all the way through it, happy days. It's still a little bit pink, I'll leave it in there. So that's more or less what the pasta is going to look like that. With uh, That's one portion, that's one meal, pretty much. And that's usually like one of my last meals of the day. That's pretty much what I have with um, mince, that is. Again, if I don't have mince, I'll put it with chicken. It all depends on what the score is on that day, you know. Again, all five portions. Uh, one is pretty much for tonight, for now. Four then, obviously there's two, one for tomorrow, for me and Soph, and then one for the day after for me and Soph again. And then obviously one for tonight. I think the chicken is more or less done, I think. See that? A nice big thick one there, so I'm gonna do whack a fork in. I'm not trying to make them look pretty either, so I don't care about slicing them, making them look ugly or anything. 
Yep. Bam. White all the way through. Cooked. And it's nice and moist. So what I do now is drain that. And there is your chicken. So what I'm gonna do with that now, that is also gonna get whacked into containers. We need containers. If you haven't got enough containers for whatever reason, sometimes you bring your containers home and you wash them. Um, I might just whack them in just one container and then as I go pretty much on that day, then I'll take the chicken breast out and put it in a container and go. Um, so I don't have to use so many containers, I just whack all the chicken breasts that I pre-cooked in just one container and whack it in the fridge. The timings of the meal, so the, the type of carbohydrate, whether we're going to have pasta and mince or we're going to have chicken and rice, will depend on the time that I'm training. I, I'm rough at the moment, just the way my schedule is, my clients, um, and diary and whatnot, I am training like late morning, early afternoon, that's what I'm getting in. So I would have had my first meal, and maybe like a little pre-workout bagel. So then my next post-workout meal would be a shake, a bagel, and then after that would be like chicken and rice, for example. So I put chicken and veg and rice. So I'm just going to put all this pretty much in the container, and I'm going to take one with me tomorrow. There. So Soph generally has about um, 100, 100 grams of cooked chicken. I go for about 170, 180, depending on the size of the chicken breasts. So it is about like three quarters of a chicken breast, pretty much. Like, depending if they're big, sometimes they're small ones. And I let all these cool down. In here now, what I'm gonna do, again, like I said, I'm not really counting them with the broccoli, the veg, a whack. You know, a good amount of broccoli in there. This is basically me for two, two days, pretty much. It's a lot. You can see it's all thickening up anyway. See all the juice? kind of go in, it's all absorbing. I'm gonna leave a little bit there. There's not all that much left anyway, it's kind of absorbing and reducing. I'm gonna leave a little bit. If you're having it fresh, maybe reduce it a little bit more, but what I'm gonna do, because, again, when it gets chilled, it's like when you go to Italy and you make lasagna and you put it in the fridge, it's always better the next day because everything goes drier and a bit more solid. And the same thing with the mints, it tastes a bit better then. So that's pretty much done. All I'm gonna do from there is put the big ball uh, on the scale. What I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna whack it all in there, just so I can get kind of more or less the right um, reading, weight reading on there. Uh. Overall, total is gonna weigh heavier. Like I said, it was about 190, so 750 grams of mints in total. But that reduces a little bit when you cook it, plus when you put the tomato in there, uh, the asparagus, it does all weigh a little bit heavier as well. So again, it's almost a kilo basically, that is 1,034 grams, a kilo, 1.3 kilos. So what I'm gonna do now is weigh that into four portions, right? So I'm gonna imagine splitting it, uh, 1,033 divided by four, 258 grams. That's pretty much what I need in the first two, which are mine, 260. And then so, because she gets um, so she has, it's basically 190 to 200 grams split into two, so it's about 100, 125 grams of mints. So again, I put the pasta on, I take this, and I'm going to try and get about 260 in total. And that again is my serving. Yeah, again, so it's times two. So then this one here is going to get split into four for Soph. She's not contest prepping, she's just prepping for like photo shoot and all that, so a couple of calories here and there is not going to be all that crazy. If I wanted to work it out, 260 divided by 2, it's 130, so again roughly about 130. That's all for the next two days, that's for tomorrow and the day after. Okay, so that is pretty much all the meals prepped for the next two days. We just got to pop out right now, and then when we get back, Soph is pretty much going to do the breakfast. I'm going to show you how we make our overnight oats, which is our meal one um, for like when we wake up in the morning. I get up, we get ready, and then I have breakfast. So it's about hour, an hour after I get up. We're going to make that when we get back. So you know, we've been out for a while. It's officially nighttime. Soph is going to make the breakfast for tomorrow again, which is Greek yogurt and 
oats overnight oats so mine is 200 and you've got 240 or 250 50? I do mine is 250 grams of that natural Greek yogurt just, yeah 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 we've got 10 grams of honey and uh, 40 oats so it's different portion size. We use Quaker oats, by the way. <laughs> we tried the Tesco ones, didn't we? Yeah, they weren't so nice. These were our favourite. They tend to absorb better. Get a touch of water in there, because otherwise the yogurt is very thick. There's a little bit of rain, and then it kind of absorbs and goes a bit more stodgier. So it's, it's for the oats, isn't it, really? It just... Yeah, it absorbs. About 80 grams of raspberries. So cute. Done. Mm hmm. And as simple as that. Took you what, three minutes, four minutes? Yep. To make, and that's breakfast for the morning. So that is pretty much all the meals prepped. Like I said, prepping for two days at a time. I find it easier. So the next, this, today is Sunday, I'll probably cook for Tuesday. I'll cook Tuesday, Wednesday night now. Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on the, on the day, what meals I got left. They're not my only carb sources. Again, I use things like basmati rice for my carb sources. It's nice and easy. I can just whack it in the microwave. And obviously oats, which you saw going in to the Greek yogurt and bagels. They're the kind of things I use around my workouts. So they're pretty much all the sources of protein, carbs and fats I'm using. My fats can come from peanut butter. And if I am low on fats, maybe I'll chuck some olive oil in and uh, while with the chicken, with either chicken rice or if I'm not having mince maybe, I'll, and I have chicken and pasta, I put olive oil in from there. And I use like a little balsamic glaze or barbecue sauce, and I measure the sauces as well, which all factor into my calories. So, that has been how to meal prep. Have a like the video, guys. Don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Hi. Hey, man, don't forget to subscribe to Ricardo. You're going to make all kinds of things. All kinds. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah. I'm right.